Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to sit down and try out a brand new foundation launch. I feel like we have some exciting ones coming up. I'm really excited about the Huda Beauty, but today we're gonna be diving in to the Patrick Ta Major Skin Foundation. So this has been getting, I would say, some mixed buzz, so I'm curious to try this out. I wanna do a demo, wear test, and then I will give you my initial first impressions. So we will see how this goes. Of course, I will link this down below and then the rest of the makeup that I am wearing when I finish my makeup. But if you like first impressions, you're excited about this launch, or you just like dedicated first impressions on brand new products, give this video a thumbs up. And let's go ahead and get into trying out the brand new Patrick Ta foundation. Okay, so before we get into the demo, I wanna talk about the product claims, the price, and all of the information. So this is the new Patrick Ta Major Skin Hydra Lux Luminous Skin Perfecting Foundation. I feel like the names are just getting a little out of hand, but also you really can't just say like the Patrick Ta Foundation. It has to have something a little bit extra, but sometimes I'm like, Okay, this is like 10 words to give me the name of this. So this is available now at Sephora, also on his website. I will have retailers linked down below. It does retail for $58 which is pretty expensive. That is more in line with like a Giorgio Armani, something like that. So I felt like this price point was a little steep. So just keep that in mind. You do get one ounce, which is typical of most foundations. They do classify this as medium coverage and a radiant finish. Now this formula is vegan and they do say it is best for dry combo and normal skin. It also has a 12 month shelf life and it does say made in the USA with globally sourced materials. So this is what the box packaging looks like. It's that standard rose gold from Patrick Ta. And as far as the actual bottle, it is really nice and luxe. It has that rose gold cap. And then it does have this really nice, almost like metal feeling front label. So I do think this feels nice and luxe. I don't know if that's part of the price point, but it does feel and look very nice. I'm hoping that my camera's focusing, although, you know, it does me dirty quite a bit. So I picked up the shade 11 Golden. There are 30 shades to choose from, and I do have some natural sun because I've been out this summer. So this also does have a pump. I wanna pump this out and let's just swatch this shade. So it is, I would say, more of a thin formula. It's not extremely thin, but it is running down, and it does feel pretty thin when you do blend it out. So I want to go ahead and zoom you in a little closer and I want to start on a demo application. Okay, so I went ahead and zoomed you guys in nice and close and I want to talk about my skin type. So I have a combo oily skin type. I do get oily, especially like on my chin area and then right here by the sides of my nose. I know this is a more radiant foundation, so it's probably going to be suited better to those of you with more of a normal or dry skin type, but it does say combo on the actual website, so I do want to test those claims. So I was watching a little bit about this, watching some demos that Patrick did on TikTok, and he actually said if you have like combo oily skin, you don't even need to use a moisturizer because this is packed full of like hyaluronic acid and moisturizing skincare ingredients and I thought I've never really tried that in my reviews so I want to try today to not use any moisturizer and let this be like my skincare and foundation in one so I am going to test that claim out so I have a clean face I washed it and then just put on you know my eye makeup and then on one side of my face I do want to add in mattifying products because I want to see if if this does wear better with mattifying products or if it's something that looks the same. So I'm gonna reach for my Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. This is just like a deluxe uh, size or a jumbo size that I got during the holiday time. And I'm going to apply this because it's really good at controlling oils and also giving you that smooth, poreless look. I'm gonna put this just on 
one side of my face. Now in terms of application, it does say for a base layer, shake well, add one to two pumps on the back of your hand, spread it out, and then distribute the formula evenly into a dense foundation brush. Now if you want a flawless finish, it says shake well and blend and build coverage with a beauty sponge. And then it says you can do the underpainting artist technique, which I just don't prefer on myself. So what I'm gonna do today is use a brush on one side and then a sponge on the other. We'll see if we see any difference is, but I want to give this a good shake. I will say that the packaging is really beautiful, but the fingerprints are going to be gnarly on this. So just be prepared. I'm kind of thinking I might use a BK Beauty 109, something a little bit smaller because I don't want to go too heavy. I'm going to use more of like a pressing motion so that I get more coverage with using less product. I do feel like the coverage is there. Definitely a nice medium. I'm not having to work hard. The shade is not matching me perfectly. It just is a little too warm. So I am gonna have to pull down my neck, but in terms of the finish, absolutely is a luminous or radiant finish, which I'm wondering how this is going to play with powder. So we will, of course, test that out. I know there's been a little bit of controversy surrounding this, specifically if you look at the Sephora reviews, which oddly enough this morning when I looked, they were all deleted, but there was some negative reviews and a lot of them, it kind of seemed like the people hadn't even received the product. So they were just sort of unhappy with the price point. I did see some comments in regards to a lot of like acne and pore clogging ingredients, which makes me a little bit uneasy just because I do have acne prone skin. Again, like cystic acne, I am healing from some breakouts that I, you know, messed with before that time of the month. I really hope that I don't have like this massive breakout from this. You can never really tell what reviews are legit anymore, which is really kind of sad, but I feel like, you know, I take them with a grain of salt and I do the same with TikTok, unfortunately, because I was looking up, you know, just people's thoughts on this and I felt like I could only find maybe like two or three videos on TikTok that didn't have beauty mode on. So I'm hoping this is helpful for you guys. So this is what it looks like with a brush and with my mattifying primer. You can see that this is really, really luminous. I don't like when it has that sticky tacky feel and this feels thinner, but it's definitely got that like emolliency. It's just a thinner formula. I don't think that there would be a chance in the world that I could not set this. If I touch my face, it would transfer 100%, but again, I do have like combo oily skin. So on this side of my face, I'm gonna go ahead and use a beauty blender. And this is supposed to give a flawless finish, which I don't really know what the difference is. It almost seems like you would get more coverage with a beauty sponge from what the website was saying. So blending this out, I do feel like the coverage is still pretty good. Like I don't feel like I'm losing coverage, which is something that's typical when you use a sponge. It does feel a little bit more, let's say tacky. And I don't know if it's just because this is damp, which I am not preferring. So I'm actually going to go back to the brush. Okay, so this is what the foundation looks like freshly applied. You can see that it is definitely not blurring my pores. I think that is just kind of the nature of the beast. Whenever you have something that's really radiant or luminous, it's supposed to bring light to that area. And I don't really want light spotlighting my texture. So my pores that are on my chin and right by the sides of my nose. And then my forehead, I don't mind as much, but I wanna see how this does once I use some powder. That is something that is really important to me because I'm somebody that has to set my entire face. Just right now, I feel so sticky. I don't know what it is and I don't know if it's just like my skin type, but I can't even imagine wearing my hair down with this, like right now, just having even these flyaways, I feel like they're getting covered in foundation. It's just not comfortable for me. So I wanna go ahead and grab some concealer and see how that blends on top of this and how powder sets. So I'm going to speed through that and then I'll kind of give you my thoughts once I get it set.
Okay, so I went ahead and applied my concealer and setting powder, and I'm running into some problems. I feel like from far away, it looks okay, and I didn't notice initially when I was setting my face, but when I got my magnifying mirror out, I started seeing some issues. I somehow have lost coverage and almost like it just took off the foundation on my chin. This is something that's easily fixed. I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona High Glam Powder. I'll just take that on a brush and just add a little bit more coverage in. Another thing I'm noticing is when I zoomed in and really looked, it's almost like I have a thick like line of gunk on top of my brows. I'm not sure what is causing that. So I'm gonna take a spoolie and remove a little bit of that product. And the last thing I noticed was really just losing coverage. So basically touching my face in any capacity with a brush, with a sponge, with a puff, it just lifts up and this is something that I deal with pretty much with every foundation that is hydrating, very luminous. They just don't wanna stay in place. They smear and they lift. So I feel like I've lost coverage, which I'm gonna put some photos from my iPhone up here because trying to get you to see what I'm seeing sometimes can be difficult. But I wanna go ahead and finish my makeup and I wanna see how this does when I start blending with brushes on top of it for my bronzer and my blush. So I am gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and then we will see what we're looking like and start the wear test. And let's hope that all my products blend over this seamlessly. All right guys, so I went ahead and finished the rest of my makeup off camera and my thoughts are kind of the same. It looks good from afar. It doesn't feel overly heavy or sticky and my skin doesn't look overly textured. So those are the pros. The negatives are I definitely saw some patching specifically on my cheek area because when I did set with powder, it lifted like I said before. So I almost had to pack on like blush and bronzer to get it to stick. It was almost like trying to apply those powders to my bare skin that was peeking through if that makes sense. I do feel like it is kind of looking not that luminous once I put my powder products on. I just don't know who would not set this, but once you do set it, you're going to have, you know, that luminosity really, really toned down, if that makes sense. Now, if you're somebody that just sets your T-zone, you probably would still enjoy like the luminosity. But again, to me, just even like my hair right now, if I didn't set this, there's no way I could even have my hair down. Like it was just super sticky and very, very emollient. But I am curious to see how this is gonna wear. I did have those patching issues, but overall I don't feel like I'm getting greasy. Now again, it's only been, I don't know, like 30 minutes since I applied this. So I do wanna see how this performs as the day progresses. So it is about 11 o'clock right now. I did get a little bit of a later start. So I'm gonna try to wear this until I would say at least like six. I wanna get at least like seven hours in because I do wanna upload this today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on with my day. I don't have a ton going on. I'm just gonna do a couple errands, some things around the house. Try to stay out of the heat because it is so hot outside. I will see you guys in a few hours to update you on how everything is looking. Okay guys, so I'm back from my first check-in. It is 3.57 here, so about five hours because I did finish applying it around 11 a.m. So I am kind of surprised. This is not what I was expecting five hours in. I thought I was going to be an oily mess and I really don't even feel like I have any oil to touch up, which is surprising because this is so glowy, so luminous. I thought that I was going to just be like an oil slick. So the fact that I'm not is surprising to me. Now I did use the mattifying primer on this side and I do feel like it looks a little bit more perfected or matte, which makes sense. But this side with no primer, I feel like looks fine. I'm not feeling oily at all. So I am pleasantly surprised that it's not oily or like slipping all over. I don't think my skin looks awful, but it's one of those that when you get up close, you start seeing like, ooh, that looks a little bit like it's clinging and that looks like it's settling into your pores. That looks a little bit faded or patchy. I'm not noticing really anything wearing off. The biggest issue I'm noticing is just settling and clinging on my chin area. 
and oddly enough, it looks pretty dry. So I'm gonna check back in in a couple hours. I really don't anticipate much changing, but you never know. Uh, that's my update or my initial thoughts on my first check-in. You guys will have to let me know what you think down below, but I will be back here around 6 p.m. We'll do our final check-in, and then I'll kind of give you my like overall thoughts. All right, guys, so I'm back for my final check-in of the day. It is 6.06. So again, this will be a full like seven hours because I wanted to get this video posted today, but I will continue to test this out. I just want to give you my initial first impressions. So my overall thoughts on this foundation, I'm a little bit perplexed because I thought that I was going to be much more dewy or greasy at this stage. I think the thing that made the difference today is the fact that I didn't do any moisturizer and no SPF. The only thing that is really not convenient about that is that most people wear SPF every day. So I think that if I were to do my normal routine, even with a mattifying primer, I feel like I would have been much more oily. We've always been taught to moisturize, 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 no matter what. So the fact that Patrick is saying if you're more oily to use this as your skincare and foundation in one is just different, something I've not heard of before. So I do think that this is possible for those of you that have a more oily skin type if you use the right products. But unfortunately, even though this isn't as greasy or oily on my skin, I just don't love this formula. I find it to be insanely, insanely glowy. This is truly just extremely emollient. Like I said, the second ingredient is glycerin. So it's really gonna give you like that wet look. And for most people, I would say it's not practical. You're going to have to set it down or I feel like you're gonna want to set it down unless you have extremely dry skin or you like to have that like really wet feel. It was noticeably just like sticky. Like I said, my hair was just way too close for comfort. So I can't imagine somebody wearing this all day without powdering. Even if you powder just the center, you would have hair just like stuck to your face all day. I just can't stand that feeling. So I just don't think this is practical for most skin types. I also just don't think this is very flattering in terms of being smoothing. I do not agree that this is blurring. I just don't think that this formula is anything special, unfortunately. And for $58, like that's a lot of money. There's so many good foundations out there and I just don't feel like this plays well with powder. I feel like it's a little bit finicky because it is so wet. It's almost like mixing powder with it is like a gamble. And then if you don't wear powder, there's just no way literally that I could go on with my day without powdering. So I don't think this is absolutely horrible. I do think that you can get it to work if your sole worry is having like oily skin. I think with the right prep, the right products, you can probably get this to work. But again, I'm just not impressed with the formula in general, unfortunately. I think it's just one of those things that's gonna look beautiful if you slather it on and take some Instagram photos. But for the average, you know, everyday consumer, people are going to work, people need to have things that are sweat proof, or they need something that's gonna look nice and dewy as the day goes on. And I didn't really like the application or the way this looked when I first applied it. So really the wear test didn't change much for me. I just didn't like it overall, the way it felt, and the way that it looked once I used my normal powders, which is what I would do literally every day. So those are my thoughts. I am surprised that I'm not super oily, but again, I will test this out in the week to come, and I'll probably just try it tomorrow with my normal like everyday moisturizers and see if I have a different experience, but I just don't think this is anything special, and for that price point, it needs to like blow me away. So I am ready to take my contact out and put my glasses in. My eyes are like so sensitive since this past year. So it's like killing me having my contacts in for this long, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. Everything will be linked down below. Let me know if you picked this up or if you did try it. Do you love it? Do you not like it? I would love to know your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.